Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution? Or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. And hello, hello, and welcome to Eros Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meet. My name is Dr. Martha Tara Lee. I'm a clinical sexologist based in Singapore. And my company is called Eros Coaching. That's E-R-O-S coaching.com. What I do is I work with individuals and couples who have any kind of um, sexual issues, questions, concerns, inhibitions and uh, also when it comes to relationships. So sex and uh, relationship is very much connected. My passion, however, is looking at people with sexuality issues. They may come in with uh, some kind of difficulty when it comes to their sexuality, and uh, we will work through anything that comes up, including relationships. However, I choose not to work with people right now who are coming just for relationship uh, issues because ultimately my passion is around uh, sex and intimacy. So if you're interested to work with me, you can always reach out to me by going to Arrow Coaching. I'm available via Skype and also face-to-face in Singapore. Come next year, I plan to, to travel a lot more and work with uh, clients and also run more workshops internationally. I will be going to Perth in September and Sydney in October to attend some workshops and also run some. And so if you are in those areas, do reach out to me, drop me an email and I'll send you the details. Today's show is about masculinity and femininity and the title is Masculinity and Femininity Explained. Um, the reason why I decided to do this uh, show, uh, besides the fact that um, a guest of mine put out, is that actually there is a lot of misconception around the two, and uh, this is all explained uh, in Tantra. So when we think of our masculinity, we always think of uh, a macho person, we always think masculinity is uh, in the form of a man. We always think of uh, masculinity as being really strong, stubborn, and um, direct. When it comes to femininity, we think of uh, uh, girly. We think of uh, it in terms of looks and that femininity is really about being uh, soft and a dreamy kind of a look and therefore it's not difficult to assume that femininity is uh, about uh, weakness. It may not be something that we would want to uh, pursue in that case. And uh, really growing up I didn't know much about what masculinity and femininity meant, even though I came across these words, it just wasn't something that really drew me in to want to find out more. And uh, most people really have only a dictionary understanding of what these words mean. And so in today's show, this is what we'll be exploring more of, and um, hopefully you begin to see the value of it. And this can actually help you really learn to appreciate and understand yourself a lot more. So let me talk about uh, my journey of understanding what masculinity and femininity was really about. Uh, Actually, this really came up when I stumbled upon it. And I did so with reading the book, The Way of the Superior Man. It was uh, highly recommended to me by several people who said that it's a good way to 
get into understanding about Tantra. So the Way of the Superior Man is uh, written by David Data, and he's actually a leading sexuality coach. And the funny thing is, in his books, he does not use the word Tantra, because I feel Tantra is a lot more than just a term. And so he explains Tantra in uh, not so many words, in lots of words. And his books are beautifully written, and we feel very inspired when we read them. So that's David Data, that's D-I-D-A, and uh, The Way of the Superior Man. So I read this book when I had actually broken up with my ex-husband. I was asked to read this, and I really postponed reading this because I felt I had uh, time, I was too busy. And um, when I read it, it just so totally made sense to me that I wish I had read this earlier before the end of my marriage. So in The Way of Superior Man, he talks about what it means to be a superior man. And in the book, I really understood a lot more about men than I ever did. And I've recommended this book to my clients, and my clients also say that they found this book really useful because it helps them, it helped articulate for themselves, putting into words what they themselves feel but are not able to express. So it actually helps give men a voice, and it also helps to uh, guide uh, men who feel unsure about life and about themselves and with their masculinity. It also helped me, uh, as a woman, to better understand really the heart and soul and desire of a man. So what actually did the book say? <laughs> so the book um, talks about superior men and all that, um, and the biggest aha that I got, it was this big epiphany I received, was when I came across this part that says if that's who men are, men are masculine, men are direct, men are forceful, men are conquerors, then what would speak to them is actually the indirect approach. And that was a big aha moment because in my past communications with my ex-husbands, I would um, try to communicate with them. I would apply all the things that I learned in communication, especially since I have a master's in math communications, to be direct, to be straightforward, to be clear, to be to be as uh, to use in uh, um, one word what I don't need in ten. So just be really, really clear and sharp, sharp and sharp, sharp and sweet. And uh, here I am reading in a book. No, you shouldn't. You should use the indirect approach. And never once in my life did anybody actually articulate this in a way that makes sense to me. So I've tried yelling, screaming, crying, um, repeating, being clear, being forceful, being direct, and it was pushing away my partners. I really didn't understand what I was doing, and nobody told me that there was a lot of value in the indirect approach. And because the way of superior man is really about Tantra, I decided to go find out more about Tantra and so went to some bookshops. And so in today's episode, I, I want to explain what I've learned in Tantra and how Tantra explains masculinity and femininity and why that is value for you and how this can potentially uh, change your life. So stay tuned to Arrow's uh, Evolution. This is where sex and spirit meet. And um, this is uh, Dr. Martha Tara Lee. Today we're talking about masculinity and femininity, the value of it, and why this is going to change your life. If you are interested to listen to my past episodes, just go and Google Arrow's Evolution at a glance. And you'll be able to see the link. It'll just pop right up. And I have painstakingly put every single episode onto that one page. So all you need to do is just scroll down and all the links are there. You'll be able to listen to other shows. 
You can do a control S to seek out certain keywords that you have. And in today's show, we're talking about masculinity and femininity, and you will be able to find um, tantric, tantric episodes that I've had where I've interviewed past uh, tantra teachers. I also have my teacher, uh, Rachel Jane Groover, who talks about the art of feminine presence. And uh, that is also something that you will want to check out uh, for sure. There's also uh, another episode uh, talking about the importance of uh, receiving. And that is uh, very much uh, something that I learned in the Art of Feminine Presence. So we spent a whole episode talking about receiving. And uh, this was with... Uh, somebody by the name of Sally. So you want to do control F, look for Sally, and you'll be able to find that particular episode that I'm talking about. I can't remember her last name. So this, uh, this is uh, Martha. We're going to have a break, and we're going to come back, and I'm going to explain to you masculine and feminine on your way. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi. I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It's 6.42 p.m. Time for Steve Plato and his son Dylan to do the dishes. They talk about everything from the yuckiness of girls to the awesomeness of his soccer team. Sometimes they don't talk at all. Then, hey! the dreaded <laughs> splash fight. It's dad o'clock, and it's the best time of the day. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Okay, and we're back. We're talking about masculinity and femininity today. So let me read the show description which I forgot to do just now. In our modern day society, where men and women have equal rights and responsibilities in their workplace and relationship, what place is there for masculinity and femininity? Is it even relevant? If so, what does one need to know? And how can one apply the concepts and principles, uh, practices and practices into our lives? So this is where I'm going to tell it all. Okay, so in Tantra, to understand masculinity, you want to think of a pole, like a pole dancing pole. Think of a pole, and uh, that's the pole that uh, the woman would lean on and twirl around. So it would be pretty scary if you're, you're twirling around the pole and the pole collapses. So that's the analogy that I have for you when it comes to masculinity. You would think of a pole, it's strong, it's solid, it's stable, it's firm, it's stubborn, it's firmly rooted, it doesn't change, it doesn't move. So these are the good things when it comes to masculinity. The not so good things as you can imagine would be because it's firm and solid and unwavering, uh, it can actually come across as stubborn, inflexible, never changing, impossible to change. Yet the very same things that draw you to a masculine person uh, may also over time be the very same things that repel you from the person. 
So that's how we always are drawn to someone and then after sometimes the very same things actually irritate us. So some of the things that used to work may not work. And the true essence of the masculine is that it's actually much harder for, for them. And this is the reason why a masculine person can come across as very slow learner, impossible to adapt, and that actually is the 100% um, essence of the masculine. So I noticed that I keep talking about masculine, and I'm not talking about gender. You can be a masculine woman. So masculinity and femininity has nothing to do with gender. You can be a masculine man or masculine woman. It applies to both genders or if you believe that there are more genders, then there are more, more than one genders as well. So it's, it's, it's not, it uh, has nothing to do with your gender. Okay, so let's talk about femininity. When you want to understand femininity, you want to think of, say, water in the river. This water in the river is soft, it's fluid, it's shape-shifting, it's changing, it's uh, flowing around uh, rocks and obstacles, going under, around, over, and it's, uh, it's definitely the opposite of the pole that I just described. It's fluid, it's uh, soft and adaptable. And uh, a feminine person would be somebody who is more likely to be able to multitask and uh, be able to change easily with circumstances. And uh, perhaps their emotions on a moment-by-moment -moment basis might change the way they feel and what they want to do. And therefore, they can come across the so the negative part. They can come across as unpredictable. And uh, some people call uh, people who keep changing their minds um, unstable, crazy. But that's really how the water and the river really feels like. So in order for us to really appreciate the masculine and feminine, we may want to take some time really looking at the two things that I just talked about. Uh, the pole, really looking at it and touching it and really trying to appreciate the properties that I just mentioned. And then the water in the river, really looking at the water in the river. And there's also a lot of beauty in it. And there's this misconception that people have that uh, femininity is uh, weak. But when you look at the water in the river, you know that there's so much uh, power in it that uh, the water goes into the, the sea and then the ocean, and it's all interconnected. There's a lot of depth in the, in the water, and it may come across as soft, but actually strong. And so, in order to really appreciate the strength of femininity, you want to think of, say, cotton or cloth. It's soft, but it's strong. They all knit it together to make clothes and garments for us. And that is the confusing part when it comes to softness. We see softness as weakness. And uh, that's actually a real strength uh, that, is, that is not separatable. <laughs> and so now that I've explained um, masculine and feminine, uh, so just bear in mind that I'm really talking about the opposite sides of the pole. And there are people who are more masculine and there are people who are more feminine. And this is the whole nurture versus nature. You are just born that way. You're just inclined. This is who you are. And this uh, comes easy to you. So when you're at uh, closer to one side of the pole, what happens is we always tend to stick to what we're good at. If you're drawn to the arts, you, you, you cultivate that and you become uh, even better at it. You become more creative. If you are drawn to being in the head and you become an engineer, for instance, and uh, you become even more entrenched with being in your head, 
So we're drawn to what we are good at and we're drawn to what feels natural. And the real issue here comes that we don't really want to just be one person uh, because that's kind of limiting. What I mean by that is this is one aspect of who we are. We are different parts. We are different roles and responsibilities. And we are different people to different um, people <laughs> in different situations. We are a different person when we're with our moms, or with our colleagues, or with our friends, with our boss. We, we put on different hats. So if we can be different with different people, why is it that we are not exploring all facets of who we can be, who we are, so that we can reach our fullest potential? So people who, who say things like, oh, okay, so uh, in this day and age, who cares about masculinity and femininity? It's just a term that ha there's no use for it in my life. It's useless. It's just, it's just a term. It's just something that's socially constructed or culturally conditioned to put us into boxes. Well, well darling, we're, here not, we're not here to talk about boxes. We're here to talk about the two different poles so that you understand it and then you see how you can apply. In Tantra, it's not about the right or wrong. It's not about black and white. Tantra accepts all. Tantra Tantra is uh, using and explaining uh, masculinity and femininity, and it's really up to us how we want to apply it. It's just like money. People say money is the root of all evil, and uh, the way you think about money, if it's negative, it's going to affect the way you interact with money. Similarly, if we're talking about sexuality in the form of the way you show up as a masculine or feminine person and you don't understand the term, then how are you going to apply this in your life? So understanding the two uh, terms and appreciating is very important. So in, uh, in, in the masculine, we always think of um, the masculine as the leader of a household or leader of a company or country. And so we would want somebody that we can look up to, somebody that can see the macro vision and take the lead and direction. And then, uh, then we have the followers. So the, the feminine has a power in being able to shape shift, multitask, be able to make manifest things very quickly. And so the feminine actually follows the masculine. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's not that one has a lesser role or a more important role than the other. Both has its place. So once you've chosen your leader of your company, your head of the household, so to speak, and uh, you, you want to challenge and uh, keep rebelling against this person, it's going to be chaos because who is actually the person that you have appointed? You chose this uh, person to be your life partner. You chose... Uh, to submit to this person and yet you want to challenge so how exhausting will life be? It doesn't mean that your, your partner uh, who takes on the more masculine role is right or wrong. That is a different way of talking to this person so that it doesn't take away the person's power. That's very important to know that. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of like if you're at war and you're a soldier on the field, you listen to who, whoever is your commander. And uh, and as we know in, in the army, they actually uh, break you down so that you don't question authorities anymore. And sure, there are uh, hiccups and they are not perfect and they fail and they, they have uh, uh, miscalculations of judgment. However, the absolute trust uh, and uh, surrender of control and power is that. So choosing the right uh, person to be your partner is just as important as uh, being able to trust the person and build up the person and allow that person to have confidence. So it's really nothing to do with one is better than the other. If you want to um, talk to uh, women, most women, even the most alpha women would admit that deep down they're looking for somebody who is even stronger than them, who is masculine 
who they can surrender to. And uh, th that's, that's the whole part of us uh, longing to be taken care of and be protected. And so if we have a struggle of being able to let go, then it's going to be next to impossible to find somebody to be your life partner because that is actually the, the quality that you do seek in a partner and, and therefore the opposite end of the spectrum is would you be able to submit? So it's, it's, uh, it's really about knowing all parts of yourself, your masculine and your feminine side. It's letting go of judgment and uh, saying things like, oh, you, you know, if you really love me, you should just accept me the way I am. Well, that's the love of accepting who you are, then that is the desire and the evolution of who you are so that you can reach your fullest potential. So in Tantra, it's really about exploring both sides, not just one side, both sides of the spectrum so that you can be a fuller person and uh, be happier. Uh, and so uh, I've explained in a nutshell what masculine and feminine is about. We'll explore more about this after the break. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Alicia Isaacs Howes. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. You can find us every week here on Ohm Times Radio at Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. I want to thank my mommy for loving me so much. For, for taking, taking me to the doctor when I broke my foot. For, for leaving me alone when I wanted to be alone. And, and now, now, as a grown-up, I'm thankful for being able to take care of you, my dear mom. For taking you to your therapies. For understanding that sometimes you simply want to be alone. Roles change without us noticing. That's why AARP gives you the information to provide even better care for your loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Evolution on the Own Times Radio Network. You can listen to this show right now by going to this link, ontimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, you'll be able to listen to the show without needing to download any app. Today, we are talking about masculinity and femininity, and I've just described to you analogies to help you better understand the true essence of the masculine and feminine. Like I mentioned just now, most of us are not 100% masculine or 100% feminine. That's nurture versus nature. We may be born naturally more closer to the one side of the spectrum. And uh, that we are also very much influenced by a nurture, which uh, could uh, come from the media messages growing up, the, the messages that we receive from our parents, our family of origin, and then there's uh, the way we were educated as well that really influences and shapes our mind. So I would uh, consider myself um, uh, naturally born quite masculine. And so in my approach, I'm actually quite um, a go-getter and quite direct. And uh, along the way, I have actually hurt people uh, by being so abrasive. So this is what I mean just now by saying that Masculinity and femininity has nothing to do with gender. You can be born a certain way. And because my relationships were not working, so I decided to go into Tantra, learn more about it, and I realized that um, I've never really spent time cultivating and nurturing my feminine. So 
So I'm going to talk about what you can do to nurture your feminine if you want to be a more well-rounded person, if you want to know all parts of yourself and know thyself. It is not about judgment because if we focus on, oh yeah, that's not who I am, then, then that's where you're going to stay. You're going to stay where you exactly are, no change, uh, stubborn, rigid, and, and your life is not multidimensional. So exploring all of your, all shades of who you are uh, is, is part of your evolution and part of our natural desire as human beings to grow. You, you, you plant a, a seed and it naturally wants to grow into a plant. So why wouldn't we want to be the fullest version of who we possibly can be and instead get all upset about the term and can't get beyond how we don't like a certain word. <laughs> so, in order to hone your, fem uh, your femininity, uh, you want to do things that make you feel feminine. So things that make me, I'm talking about myself, things that make me feel feminine was uh, wearing dresses, putting on makeup, wearing earrings, especially earrings, because that just made me feel more girly. And so I decided to move away from just wearing what was easy and comfortable all the time to putting a little bit more effort in the way I dress when I'm with my clients. So when I'm with my clients in private coaching, I don't lose fact that I am ultimately still a woman. I can come across as forceful and abrasive. And so even just changing the way I dress made me feel good while I'm working with my clients. And that was me really learning how to become more and more comfortable with being a woman. So change, changing the way you dress can help doing things that make you feel feminine. So the key word is to feel. So whatever you do that makes you feel more feminine would already start cultivating your femininity. So things, uh, other things would be spending time with other women because with women generally are more feminine. Spending time with women and spending time with your male friends has a very different quality to it. Um, the mature feminine, mature feminine is naturally nurturing and uh, soft and uh, gentle. And that ease around other women will come to serve you because life doesn't have to always be about competition or strife. And there are people who say things like, oh, I, um, I, I, I'm not comfortable with other women. I think women are dumb or women are frivolous or women just talk about useless things. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is, why are we so hard on ourselves that we need to be going somewhere and doing something every single freaking moment of our lives? Why don't we just kind of take a chill pill and just go with the flow sometimes. So the girly talk um, can be an exercise of uh, patience, acceptance, receiving, going with the flow. And so if you can't stand a certain type of girl, then go, then go hang out with the kind of girls that you like. And uh, you can stand and you find who are smart and beautiful and inspiring all at the same time. Nobody says that you have to force yourself to be with a certain kind of girl. You can just be with other kinds of uh, women that you actually enjoy being with as well. So uh, the way you feel in your dressing, spending time with other people who you consider feminine, who you do enjoy being with, doing things that make you feel feminine. So for, for a whole year, I, I deliberately painted my nails. I, I went and got my nails done and I allowed myself to just be pampered and feel girly. And so I would go to the spa and um, get a facial and then I would go to a coffee shop and have tea and I'll take my time and go and get my nails done. So this would happen maybe once a month. But I turned it into a ritual, into a practice of loving myself. And every week I would take one day where I would uh, just do whatever I felt like doing that made me feel good. I turn off the phone, and I'll just have a, a date with myself. Uh, walk around aimlessly. 
go into a mall and just look at pretty dresses. Things that made me feel feminine. And at the end of the year, having done all those things, because that's, that's the only thing that I knew on how I could cultivate my femininity, after a year of doing that, I actually felt that my core softened. That I wasn't so hard on myself, I wasn't so critical of myself as well, because I've learned how to take time. And uh, so that, that, that's how I did it. And uh, I met up with a friend who actually met me at the beginning of the year and, at, and then at the end of the year. And then he said, whoa, Martha, you look different. And I'm like, how? And said, so, I don't know, for some reason you just look more feminine. And I just kind of went crazy. I was like, really? Like, you have no idea what this means to me. Can you just possibly describe what it feels like now interacting with me? So he he thought about it and he's like, okay, I'll use the analogy. He said, yes, please do, because I really want to know in, in, in words how I have changed. This is so important because I had been working on my family for actively for the for the whole year and nobody knew knew that because that was my secret project. And he said, Okay, fine. Okay, so previously when I interact with you uh, uh, and I leave I would feel like I've just been cut and um, there's blood oozing out of my arm. I was like, okay, and now? And now when, when I've had a conversation with you, it feels like it's not so bad. There's no blood, there's no cut. It feels more like a bruise, like, you know, just been bruised. I was like, okay. <laughs> so it's still not that great, but it's better than uh, cutting people with my words and leaving them wounded. And that's uh, what sometimes still happens when I'm feeling frazzled and overwhelmed. I do turn around and kind of attack people and just say certain things that can be uh, not from my power, that can come across as rude and still hurt people. So it's very important to keep coming back to our center. So that's the feminine. To hone your masculine, you want to hang out with the men, as I mentioned, the opposite side is hang out with the women. Men um, tend to be more masculine, hang out with the boys, letting your partner have the boy, boy night, boys night out or women's night out, and uh, doing things that are more masculine. So kickboxing, uh, boxing, lifting weights, cycling, competitive sports, marathons, triathlons, these are the things that really boost the testosterone and this actually makes the person feel uh, more masculine. Remember, it's about how you feel. And so what would be more feminine would be things like yoga, pilates, and uh, meditation would make someone feel more feminine. Things that make someone uh, feel more masculine would uh, even be the places that you're in. So a city like New York would be a lot more masculine in feeling than Hawaii. Uh, Singapore is definitely much more masculine than, say, Malaysia. And even even then, there must be certain pockets or places uh, within that city that makes you feel uh, more feminine. Say, going to a park versus going to casino. <laughs> Go uh, Going to... Uh, uh, nature, nature has a very feminine quality, and that's why we call her Mother Nature. And um, so these are these are some ways in which you can hone your masculine and your feminine. And so I I did those things, and it really shifted the way I felt. But it was really an ongoing and a slow process for myself. And it wasn't uh, until two years ago that uh, three years ago that I came across on YouTube just because I was learning about masculine and feminine and trying to read up more about such things and watch more videos. But I came across this uh, concept called the Art of Feminine Presence and they had the teacher training. So I, I signed up for it. I saved money for a year to go for the training and when I went for, for it, I realized that the practices uh, are going to change my life. So there are 44 practices in the Art of Feminine Presence, 
and um, I have been uh, since finishing the training, come back to Singapore and been teaching them to women for the last one and a half years. So first of all, it's uh, really being able to explain the difference between a masculine and feminine, being able to demystify and uh, de deconstruct for people the importance of it uh, so that uh, we can all be the best version of who we are, uh, giving examples of how we can hone our masculine and feminine. It's all about choice. It's not about right or wrong. It's not about judgment or shame. It's really about stretching ourselves uh, because we always keep doing what we're good at. We always stay stuck in patterns. And if we want to have change in our lives, then that's what we need to do. We need to do things that may, may be uncomfortable and uh, may be confronting. So I've been teaching out of family presence for the last one and a half years. And if you're interested in uh, understanding more about your family side, you can actually go and seek out classes. So there are more than 200 teachers who have been trained and certified in the Art of Feminine Presence. So just do a quick Google, the Art of Feminine Presence, and on that website, find a class near you. You'll be able to find a teacher who's teaching this uh, in the city that you're in. So we have a break now, and uh, we're going to talk more about this um, after the break. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Come heal yourself. What is healing? Healing is nothing but connecting with your all-knowing higher self that already has solutions to all your problems and is always there to guide you. Through this show, we help you to connect with that you are and tap into that innate potential you have to transform your life and fly high. Please join me, your host Monica Goyal, every Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific. Namaste. Hi, this is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Every two minutes, another American is sexually assaulted. If you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted, you are not alone. Help is just a call or click away through the National Sexual Assault Hotline. Please call 1-800-656-HOPE, that's H-O-P-E, or visit RAIN.org, that's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by Rain and this station. And welcome to the and welcome to the last segment of Arrow's Evolution today. We're talking about sex and spirit and really focusing on masculinity and femininity. So in today's show, I've explained um, using analogies of what is masculine and feminine. I've talked about how you can hone your masculine and feminine and demystify it and answer a lot, uh, some of the uh, common misconceptions when it comes to appreciating the mas masculine and feminine essence of who we are. Uh, even with uh, tantricas, they do uh, get confused about the masculine and feminine and uh, they go get get uh, all like upset about uh, the terms and uh, saying that it doesn't have any place in this society. And uh, uh, the most uh, difficult, uh, really, people um, who don't don't understand the value of masculine and feminine are the feminists. Another F word, <laughs> feminists. Uh, well, this uh, feminist belief that um, men and women are equal. 
Uh, sure, we can have equal rights. We can have equal responsibility. We can do the same thing. But does it feel good? That is always a masculine and feminine way of doing things. So, for instance, uh, a mother who's um, showering her child or bathing her child. You can do it in a very masculine way, like, oh, okay, I, I have better things to do, I just want to get this done. Well, you get the thing done, you, 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 you wash your child, your child is clean, you can do it in a masculine way, or you can do it in a feminine way. Just take a few more moments and actually add love into the mix. And you already have a more feminine way of uh, doing the exact same task. So this is, uh, is really the masculine and feminine in practice in life. That is always a different way. Let me uh, share with you a little story that I heard from my Tantra teacher. And so I was in this workshop and my Tantra teacher, she's actually a Caucasian woman who is with an uh, Indian man. And she was actually brought out in the US and so she considers herself a very masculine, uh, fem she considers herself a masculine person and a feminist. And she grew up uh, with a household full of uh, boys. She has, uh, her siblings are all uh, boys. So she knows how to fix her own tires and stuff like that. When she met this, uh, when she met this uh, Indian guy, um, uh, who is what some people consider like a more chauvinist pig. It's a masculine, masculine guy. It's the alpha male. So she then learned Tantra, and so she's been uh, very active in applying Tantric practices in her relationship. So in this story, uh, she uh, they were planning to go to India. And so she knew that he would be predisposed to use the same travel agent instead of telling him, oh, you know, your agent is too expensive, I know what you should do. She went to him and said, so for this trip to India, what do you plan to do in the, term, in the form of like, who do you, who are you going to use to book our tickets? And he said, oh, yeah, of course, the same travel agent. She knew this. She was using the indirect approach. She was asking questions. And then she asked, would you mind if I do some research and find out if we can get a cheaper place uh, uh, to get our tickets? So so, she, so he, he said, so he said, uh, sure, why not? So she does her research and she brought it back to him and he he looked at it and then he says, oh. So then she asked, asked him, um, so what do you think we should do? And he says, of course, let's just go with your option, the cheapest one. So in doing so, she did the indirect approach she didn't tell him, she asked him, she did the research, she presented it to him, she let him have a choice, and she left the final decision to somebody that she trusts would do what's best for them. And so he decided to let go of his ego and let go of his attachment to the travel agent and go with the cheaper option. And uh, this is kind of how we would approach our boss. We would, we wouldn't be so quite quite so sure of ourselves. We would discuss with our boss. We present our boss options. We would recommend to our boss, but we wouldn't take over the decision making from our boss because this is really out of respect. So this is just one example of how the feminine approach doesn't take away the power of the masculine. And uh, once again, uh, like I mentioned, it is really not about the the lack of power. It's it's really coming from a place of I have power, and I can recommend, but I can also choose to respect. 
imagine when you are, if you're in a relationship and you you do that you 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 tell your partner how they're doing something wrong and you you give them a piece of your mind and you are direct it actually kills love it kills love they feel disrespected you feel hurt they may start to withdraw from you and uh, you might win the battle but you would have lost the war the whole point is of relationships is to love each other so why not approach your partner in a way that best suits them a masculine person will only put up with so much hate to hate confrontation so the the indirect approach can sometimes really make the person feel good and also not lose love and romance for you that's so important that's what I I realized was um, what I was doing in my past relationships I was being now my guy I was hurting them and where I think that they have failed I take over I take over and I tell them no I'll do it I'll do it faster and better and quicker and I just didn't have the patience to wait around for them to come around and when you take away that from them it builds resentment and it's so important to know that the little choices that we make uh, does affect our lives and does have a long-term impact and sometimes once the damage is done uh, it's very difficult to get back the ease around us so this is a uh, really I hope I hope illuminating for you uh, the masculine and the feminine and the, the concepts and how you can nurture yourself and how you can also begin to apply this into your lives so a lot of uh, feminine people say oh, I don't have time for this I want to do something but I don't know how it starts from the little thing. It starts from doing a little inward reflection of what would make you feel better. And intuitively, lots of people would have ideas. Another example I want to give you is if you were a, a prison, prison warden, you, you are, you're a woman and you're a prison warden, and uh, you end up uh, being armored. You end up feeling energetically still in that role of being a prison warden or being like guarded and this and having an air of authority around you that can be quite off-putting to your partner when you get back home and it's difficult to uh, decompress so this prison warden she could choose to have sexy lingerie under her uniform uh, something that reminds her of her feminine so that she doesn't have such a hard time transitioning from being in a very masculine job to being in her feminine and uh, I, uh, lots of women that I know all struggle with this and um, if you're interested to find out more about the masculine and feminine and how to apply this into your life uh, look for Art of Feminine Presence teacher you can uh, work with me by Skype you can come for one of my workshops we could create a two-day intensive for you I have done intensives before and we could speak uh, about your struggles in your relationships using the whole masculine and feminine concepts so you can uh, reach out to me I'm available face to face and also by Skype and my website is called Arrows Coaching that's E-R-O-S Coaching.com I've been teaching out of feminine presence for the last one and a half years and um, I'm a sexologist I'm also a life coach I am uh, the my passion really is helping people to become fully embodied and being in the um, sexuality comfortable with it so that they can fully express themselves as as um, happy radiant uh, people and I see this, our sexuality as a big part of our power I see sexuality as um, part of our spirituality sex uh, is spiritual 
and when we embrace all of ourselves and we are our fullest potential, we shine and this this makes us uh, show up and uh, be able to help more people and uh, if all of us take charge of who we are, we can save the world. So this is um, Dr. Martha Tarani of um, Arrows Coaching and uh, this has been Arrows Evolution. And next week I have a guest and we're going to be exploring how you can improve all your relationships by becoming an amazing social human being. So stay tuned and have a good week. Peace.